Favorite time of the week? Oh, yeah. <laughs> Why like are you guys you laughing? Mean I mean... How are we feeling? Oh, the question of the year. Um, feeling good. You know, just getting better day by day. Um, but definitely, you know, seeing the progress now. So that's exciting. For the pregame uh, warm-up, when, when you went out there to kind of test it, it, it didn't look like you were doing much, like, test mobility. What were you looking for? You know, in that pregame warm to determine whether or not you could go. Yeah, I just went out and and, and played a little catch. Um, you know, that was, that was kind of the plan heading into it. So uh, to see where it was at, and, um, and that's where we were. Did you have any setbacks, Ryan, from the, that, that game when you were injured and like Sunday at Kansas City? No. Last time you spoke to me, to me, you mentioned kind of the pain and the pain tolerance overall. Is that? still something that you're working through? Is it significantly better than it was a week ago? I think it's definitely getting better. I think that's going to be um, you know, something I'm dealing with for a while, just the nature of the injury. It's not something that gets better overnight. It's definitely testing my patience and has up until this point and, and still doing so. So um, just trying to, to stay patient with it, um, doing everything I can to, to help it heal as best it can. And um, you know, excited to, to get back out there at some point. How much practice time do you feel like you would need before you, to, to be able to test it on the practice field before you feel comfortable going out there and playing in a game? Yeah, I would need some, not not a ton. Um, you know, just it's just got to get to a point to where I can I can go do my job effectively and um, and be able to you know run the offense, move around enough to to not be a statue in the pocket and and not put myself um, you know or the ball in, in harm's way by by not being able to move. What was the experience like? I guess on Sunday, you know, with the headset and opposed to the previous week when you said you were watching the game with your with your kids. I mean, uh, good to be there, I guess, at least. And we able to talk through some things with Malik and and, uh, and Todd. Yeah, it's definitely a, a step up from sitting on the couch, no doubt about it. But you know, still not a not a good feeling. You know, seeing my guys out there battling. Um, yeah, I was able to to be on the sideline, try to help out there, talking through things with Todd, with Malik, um, there on the sideline. But you know, it's definitely much better to to be playing. Do you think it helped to have you there with Malik just to kind of have a sounding board, you know, after a drive or, or whatever? whatever. Uh, I'd have to ask Malik. You know, I tried to help him, you know, tried to uh, to communicate what I was seeing and, and um, anything from the defense or from him that, that, I, that I saw. I tried to, you know, convey that over to him and, and allow him to uh, to carry forward in the game. But uh, definitely be a question for Malik. Well, did you show up at the stadium with your hope that you would play or did you have a pretty good sense all along that you probably weren't going to be able to? Yeah, I mean, the, the week was tough, you know, just heading into it. Um, you know, didn't really know how things were going to turn out, but, um, you know, had had tried tried it several times throughout the week to, to know it was going to take, um, you know, a big step forward on Sunday. Ryan, when you're able to get back, uh, Traylon now is entering the 21-day practice window. Can getting you and him back maybe help give a, a much-needed boost maybe to this passing game? I hope so. You know, I think uh, Traylon's excited to be back. I'm excited to uh, to have him back out there. I know we are as an offense excited to have him if he's able to to go this week. Um, you know, a guy who was coming along nicely for us uh, early in the season, kind of hitting his stride finally, kind of settling in, hitting his stride. You know, being in his rookie year, and then unfortunately, you know, went out with the injury. So, um, you know, it's been been good seeing him get better over the course of the last few weeks. Just talking to him in the training room and seeing where he's at and and how his rehab and progression has gone. And um, yeah, so definitely excited to uh, to start that process of getting him back on the field. What's he give Ryan? That, you know, uh, Traylon, whenever he does come back, what what you know does, does his skill set bring to the to the wide receiver core, to the offense, etc. Yeah, I mean he's he's got he's got what you look for in, in this this building and, and how we like to play, which is strength, size, uh, speed. He plays the ball well, has good hands, so um, definitely has all the tools that you look for in a wide receiver, and, and fits our scheme well. What, what have your days been like over the last couple of weeks? Um, you know, as far as rehabbing goes and studying film, like when you're inside, how many hours are you or are you working at it? Um, a lot. I don't know. I haven't sat back and counted, but it's a lot. You know, starts at uh, in between six and six thirty in the morning, and um, you know, I'm here until seven seven thirty at night. So, um, included in all that time is is the rehab, is is meeting, is practice, or or whatever my version of that is is part of my my rehab process. Uh, so yeah, there's a lot that goes into it. A lot of different little treatments and rehabs and um, modalities that we're using. Um, but you know, just trying to take it day by day and then get a little better every day. In the past, 
passing game has such a rough night like it did Sunday night? As you're watching and kind of seeing things unfold, is there anything that you can offer to guys as far as tips or encouragement or anything like that to try and snap them out of the funk? Yeah, I try. I try to, uh, to communicate with the guys and, um, and, and keep the positivity and, and build some confidence there on the sideline. Um, but yeah, it was a, a tough night. I was proud of our guys and the way they battled, you know, just kept, kept battling. Um, you know, defense played great all game. Offense got down early, was able to put a couple of drives together, take the lead, um, you know, carry that lead into the fourth quarter. We just didn't do enough in the end to, uh, to secure the win. All right, we're all endlessly focused on your, your right leg. I wonder if we should take anything new from the, the band. Oh, no, no, that's just the rehab thing. It helps to get some blood flow down into the ankle. Was surgery ever on the table for you? No. Yeah, they're good all all around. You know, you look at the, their starts up front with their front. Uh, their tackles are good. They have speed on the edge. Their backers are active and play physical. Their safeties are downhill. Uh, Sertain's one of the top corners in, in the league. You know, he's got size, uh, length, speed. Does a great job of, of matching wide receivers. So, you know, top to bottom, it's it's a talented, very very talented defense, and they're doing a really good job, really all around. You know, look at all their numbers: pass game, run game. Third down, red zone. I mean, they're they're well rounded and and playing really really good right now. So um, definitely a challenge on our hands. We're gonna have to go out. We're gonna have to execute and um, you know play our brand of football. But we're gonna have to take advantage of some some opportunities that we get. You know, when we have you know chances to to make a play, whether it's downfield or across the middle or whatever the case may be, we're gonna have to make it. Yeah, do you enjoy that challenge with the, the top red zone defense and, and the top red zone offense? Just how fun, you know, kind of having those matchups when you do get down there and how successful you've been. Yeah, no doubt. It's it's huge. You know, I think it's been crucial to our success up until this point and just getting wins. And uh, no doubt it's going to play a huge factor in the game on Sunday is uh, being able to, to extend drives down into the red zone. And then when you get down there, come away with sevens instead of threes. Did you see uh, some progress, uh, anything different in, in Malik's game from Week one to week two. Yeah, I thought he did some really nice things. You know, I was proud of him the way he he um, came out and and um, you know really orchestrated those those drives in the second quarter, uh, made some really good throws, um, gave his guys chances, and you know Hooper made a play down the field for him. I thought the naked throw that he made um, early on to to Austin was really good. You know, guy in his face and and moving to his right, uh, and made some other good throws. You know, throughout the game. So definitely, um, you know, proud of him and the way he you know came back and battled through it. Scoring drives compared to the rest of the game. Was there something that was working then that maybe wasn't working the rest of the game? Well, we were efficient and we made some plays. You know, I think uh, that's what it comes down to. Is the run game was was efficient, had some explosive runs in there where Derek was able to to get free and and create some big runs. Uh, and then the pass game, we we had some opportunities and then we made the made the plays when they were there. And um, that just has to happen more consistently. Um, misread the schedule too, uh, Mike. Activating Traylon, uh, at least to the practice to window, return to practice window. With the passing game, is it a matter of maybe getting some guys back, better execution, combination of both? Probably a combination of both. Um, you know, it'd be good to have him back out there and see what, uh, you know, see how he feels and then work through the week. But obviously the, the entire um, game, three phases, is about, you know, the execution improving, and I think the first start of that is is the details, and we've had, you know, some really good conversations thus far this week about some of those. It might be different with every guy, but what do you look for when a guy returns to practice? Uh, conditioning, you know what I mean, game conditioning, um, you know, limitations in, in their job, and specifically, you know, trailing would just be, you know, the ability, you know route running and, and those different Things that he needs to do when, you know, whether he's snapping down or, you know, making different movements and cuts, um, and then game conditioning. What are the challenges of staying in shape when you're dealing with a foot injury? Yeah, I would say that you know nothing can translate running, you know, with conditioning. You know, when you go out there and you're running, especially as, as a receiver. Um, but I think some of the equipment has gotten better, whether it's, you know, the different bikes or the arc. Um, we've gotten a lot out of the pool. We've gotten a lot out of the uh, the hydro room uh, that we've put in that has the, the different treadmills underwater and, you know, everything that I've heard from guys that, that are gassed. Um, Ultra G, you know, I mean, running at 80% of your body weight, 
you know, taking some of the load off, and you know, he's been able to do that. How much did you progress mentally uh, when you're off like that as a rookie and had a position? And did, have you seen you know that from him during that time? Yeah, we, you know, Rob uh, gave him some projects and gave him stuff to do to be involved and to continue to study, and I think that that'll. Um, you know, play itself out here on on the field and making sure that, you know, he is um, up to speed. But I know he's been working hard. What are the chances of Ryan being able maybe to make a, a big leap forward in, as he tries to get back this week? I'm not going to talk about percentages or leaps. What, uh, what are the Broncos doing so well on defense? What? Uh, yeah, I mean, they, they put a lot of pressure on you. You know, they'll they'll send, you know, five guys. They cover you up. You know, base front, obviously, 34, and they'll get everybody covered up front and you know, find ways to get those guys to win, um, whether it's with the edge pressure or you know, Draymond Jones or the other Jones, and, you know, and then they get on you pretty tight in the back end. How about the secondary with that pass defense being top ranked in the league? Yeah, they get good players, and they execute well. And, you know, it starts with the safeties, obviously. Um, Simmons and, and K Jack and you know Sertain, you know, pretty much just smothers his guy and you know, try to find some holes after that. Dylan Cole seems like he maybe has improved as, as much as anybody on defense. What's what's keyed his takeoff? Probably health and opportunity. You know, I think his ability to to get back and healthy and, and work and um, you know, has has stepped in there when 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 Zach wasn't available, and um, I think, like you said, continue to to improve and continue to um, understand the concepts, understand what's going on, and being able to, you know, even when he wasn't playing full time, he stepped in there against the Texans and, and stepped in when we were down some outside linebackers played out there, um, so starting to show some versatility. Suggest that Octree has even taken it up another step this year, even from how well he played last year. Have you seen him doing some things differently, better, uh, you know, uh, this season? Uh, you know, I think he just, you know, uh, taking advantage of, of the opportunities, being disruptive, you know, being instinctive, and, you know, certainly getting in there uh, on the inside sometimes uh, helps. But, um, you know, we're going to need. We're gonna need more, you know, from Danico and, and everybody else involved. But, you know, it's it's always good to see the guys that work hard and guys that care and and put a lot into it have success. From your day to day. Go ahead, Go ahead Kat. Okay. On the note of the defense, just coming off of a, a game like that with the effort they put in, and then this week having a short week, how do you balance this week in terms of just the bodies out there, the practice of it? Uh, won't be too fast today, Caleb. Your day-to-day uh, observation: uh, What is it that makes Derrick Henry able to just continue to come out here and take all the carries, the ground and pound, everything that he does? Uh, what, what is it that allows him to keep going? From your observation, well, I think his physical stature uh, probably helps. I think he works extremely hard. I think he, you know, trains hard, prepares, um, and I think mentally he's. Ready for it as well, you know. I mean, he he wants it, and you know, Tony does a good job of trying to manage him and um, and where he's at. But you know, he's an important part of what we do, and uh, so he knows that going in, and he gets himself ready to go. Those weeks where you have to rely on him to really carry the load, like, do you have a conversation with him, you know, leading up to the game where he knows coming into it that he's going to you know, get a, a heavy workload? No, I don't think him and I need to have a conversation. He's the starting running back, and you know, I think he knows like that's that's what the role is. How much of a barely target Cody, and every conversation about him is about him as an elite blocking wide receiver. Should an elite blocking wide receiver be blocking in the back, or is that a, uh, did you, a bad? Did call? you have your scout watch that play with you? I I I, I didn't think so. Uh, our longest gain against the Colts was a pass to Cody Hollister against uh, Gilmore. So uh, maybe we could try to get him open and have some more of those plays. And you know, whether it's Traylon or Cody, those guys down the field, uh, I'm, I'm putting a premium on our blocking 
and th those efforts and Nick Westbrook and the Texans game, you know, I, I just know to break those big ones, those are the guys that have to do it. Um, turning those 12 yarders into 40, 50, 60, um, sometimes in their zest to do that, you know, we have to make sure that, you know, we're not, we're not grabbing them. And we've had a couple of those. We, we certainly have. And, um, but the message to them is that they're going to keep doing it. I tell them, keep doing it. We just got to improve the, the technique and, and try to get better at it. But we're, we're going to keep blocking like that. That's what I told Traylon. That's what I told Nick. That's what I've told Cody. That's what I've told all of them. You, you said Sunday night, though, had there been a premium on catching, you probably would have won the game if, if you caught one of, one of two passes. Mm, I don't know if I said premium, but that was your word. I, I just said that there was a couple passes that we needed to hopefully come down with next time. That, that was it. We're, we're focused on Denver and, and a very, very good defense and you know what we have to do this week. You've seen Russell is? Wilson before with the Seahawks. What's anything different you've seen with the Broncos in this first year, maybe not executing at the level? <laughs> no, I've before. really kind of focused on the last couple games okay. where it looked like they've had some success and they went to London and you know, had their best output there. You know, they're eighth in the league in, in X plays, X play passes. So uh, still moving it down the field. He threw it 65 yards in, you know, London. Um, that's not at altitude. So I would imagine that that's a lot further out in Denver. Um, and, and I think they went on the ball a little bit. I think that they have found uh, Dolchich. I think he's starting to really like him. Um, Judy and, and obviously, you know, uh, Sutton and what may happen with, um, you know, Edmonds as, as a you know, change of pace back. We've seen Judy make several flash plays this year. How much is he doing in terms of being more consistent? Well, I think he's working at it. I think he's certainly working at it. Um, you know, it was outstanding play to start the game. And, um, but, it, but again, like I would say, the majority of the guys and coaches included, we all have to just continue to to hone in on some details and understand, um, you know, if it, the look changes a little bit that we're prepared for it or the coverage or, um, but he's, he's working his way in there and, and continuing to try to find a role for us. Is there Whenever a it is specific that. area where you've seen Jig grow the most? Just well, I've talked about the special teams, you know I mean? Didn't think that he would have the impact that he kind of has had in that regard, um, using his skill set, his speed and, whether that's covering kicks or being on the punt team, and um, he's working hard at his blocking. You know, he can he can run. And he's been a reliable, you know, pass catcher. Just maybe sometimes, uh, sometimes Chig's matchups are are with safeties. They aren't with linebackers, right? And so, uh, just how he needs to to play to to get open against a, you know, a, a more skilled player that's just as fast as he is. Is that the trailing does come back? What what does that skill set that he have? What does that bring to your to your wide receiver core to, to the offense potentially? Well, it gives you some size, and you know I thought he was really coming on, and you know his ability to adjust to the football and um, his play speed, and his, you know, I think he always tried to play physical. Was it a challenge for for I guess Jeffrey Simmons to, to to play well on Sundays and not lose some of his technique work when he's not able to practice in the course of the I think it's just a lot of studying, a challenge. It's just trying to get healthy, you know, everybody get back and ready to go for Sunday, whether that's uh, that they practice a little bit, whether they're limited. Um, everybody's got a different plan. Uh, I know that Jeff, um, you know, is conscious of those things about practicing and wanting to be able to practice uh, so that some of those techniques don't, um, you know, don't slip and he can, he can work them throughout the week. John's trade of AJ has worked out for this team. I mean, we we played a Broncos. AJ's on us on the Eagles, so you know, really the whole focus of my day is on getting this team ready to go for for Denver um, against a, a defense that plays multiple fronts and against an offense that plays with multiple you know personnel groups. That that's all it is. Well, it's about how he responds. You know, to the work, um, did some work last week and, um, you know, just had to make a decision one way or the other and didn't feel like, you know, last week it, it was going to be ready to play in the game 
this week hopefully you know is different but it's you know going out there and doing things that you're going to be asked to do in the game at the same speed and then seeing how you respond and seeing if there's any setbacks what do you think from Farley to, to feel like you can I guess trust him to get a, more of a role on defense yeah, he's you know he's working hard and, and he's trying to improve and you know we'll give him an opportunity in practice to evaluate and understanding and ability to to execute different things that we're asking him to do.